Hello and welcome to my basic Factorio signaling tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this tutorial, I would like to cover the most basic aspects and uh, rules and principles of rail or train signaling in the game. Uh, I'd like to make this a quick, to the point, concise tutorial for the most basics of it. So let's hop right into it. And this is for very beginners. Now, let's start with the, the big differences between the two signals in the game. I think before we even go into how to signal, uh, we need to understand the, you know, the rules and the differences between the two types of signals we have to work with. Uh, the first one is a rail signal. The first signal we have to work with is a rail signal. Uh, the other type of signal we have to work with is a chain signal. And there are a couple differences. I like to think that there are two main differences between these two signals and how they operate. Uh, the first, difference being that rail signals only look directly in front of them. So when you place two signals, you create a block. So a section between signals is considered a block. And you can see this with color coding. The game adds a very nice visual indicator here. So this is a block. And this will be in basically an infinite block until you place another signal. If we place another one, we now have another block. This is another block. So there's, you know, one, two, three. Um, normal signals will only look in the block directly in front of them. Uh, and to show this, if we take a train and place it here, you'll notice this signal is red because it's noticing there's something blocking the rail path um, directly in front of it in this section here. Uh, whereas this signal back here is still green because it's looking only in this block up until this signal and there's nothing nothing in here, not, nothing obstructing the path, so it's continuing to be green. Whereas chain signals will look farther ahead than that. They will look um, all the way up until the the block in front of the the first rail signal in front of them. I, I know that's a that's a mouthful there. <laughs> It'll make more sense when I show you uh, actually having it in action. Um, but this chain signal is not only going to look in this block, it'll also look in this section here, um, all the way up until the first block after the first chain signal, or sorry, rail signal. So if we, let's just match this. If we place this here, um, this chain signal back here is looking in this section, as well as this section. Um, that's as far as it will look, though, in this particular setup. It will not look past here, uh, past the signal. It won't look past here. Uh, you'll notice a very big difference, though. We place this. This signal now turns red, whereas this one is still green. Okay, so this chain signal is looking all the way up until this block, and it's noticing that there's something obstructing the path here. So it's actually going to stop a train way back here. Whereas this signal would allow a train to pull all the way forward to here. Okay, so that is the main difference. And again, all this will make more sense in practice when I show you. The second biggest difference uh, is rail signals have what I, I consider two solid states, red and green. And it's pretty straightforward. If it's green, there's nothing in the way. You can proceed forward. If it's red, there's something blocking the path, and it will stop a train. Chain signals have three solid states. They also have red and green, which indicate basically the same thing, um, except, again, that the chain signal will look farther ahead than just the block in front of it. And then it has a blue signal state. And this one is very important because this is basically saying that there is at least one open path in front of it, um, I mean, you could just go as far as that, that there's at least one open path in front of it. Um, I like to think of it where there's at least one open path and at least one blocked path. Um, but the, the important thing to take away from that is that if there is an open path somewhere um, in the area it's looking, it will still let a train through, um, even though another path in front of it may be blocked. Um, so if we uh, continue forward, uh, one quick thing I want to show you lastly with this is chain signals can be, as the name would indicate, chained together to look farther ahead. So like I said, it will only look into this section here. If we were to pick this up 
and move it here, you can see it's actually letting a train through all the way back up to si the signal. It's basically just defeated the purpose of this um, because, again, it's only looking into this block. However, if you want it to extend and look farther up into this section, all you need to do is just chain two chain signals together like this, one after the other. And it's now having the same exact effect that it did previously because it's looking up to here to this chain signal, which is looking up to here, and it's basically relaying the message backwards um, farther back. So if you want to kind of extend the, the view distance of it, you can just kind of chain them together like this. Um, so there's that. Now, to show you the difference here between the three states, we have... Let's just place this here. So we have basically an identical setup here. We have a main line and a split off. Uh, this guy here, this would actually probably be better uh, indicated, or I suppose differently indicated. <laughs> um, differently indicated, doesn't matter where you place the train, but um, you'll notice that this path is blocked and this one is open and this is letting it through. Now in this case, it's fine because if a train stopped here and the train needs to proceed forward, no problem, right? I think that this was probably a better example having it on the main line here. Um, and this is purely just to show the difference. In practice, this doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, but uh, this is uh, keeping this signal red because you know there's obviously something here. Um, and this is proceeding forward. However, you'll notice that this signal, this chain signal, is blue. And that's because it's seeing both of these paths in front of it. And it's saying, you know, one's blocked, but there is also one open path here. Okay. And uh, this, this is the main difference. Again, if a train needed to go forward, it wouldn't really matter. If a train needed to turn here, this would allow it to do both either way. Um, but this just to show you the very basic difference between these two states. Um, this is blue because it is actually looking down both these paths, whereas this one is only looking down this path um, and not really into this signals area, so it's going to let a train come through here. Um, now, in junctions is where this is really important. If we come over to here, we have two identically built junctions. Construction-wise, you know, rail placement-wise, they're absolutely identical. The difference being that this junction on the left has chain signals in it and is signaled what I consider properly, um, whereas the one on the right has only normal signals in it and is considered, well, I would consider improperly signaled, um, at least in the aspect of uh, stopping, um, stopping like, like blockage here on, on the main line. So let's show this an example. If we take this train and create, let's get rid of that create a temporary station, a temporary path for it. You can do this, by the way, by control left clicking in the train menu here. And I'm going to tell it to go forward to here. And it stopped at this signal. Okay, so if it were, you know, it's, it's come forward and it stopped at this signal. I place a dummy train here to indicate a train has stopped on the main line here. Uh, and it stopped this train here because, again, this chain signal is looking forward to this chain signal, which is looking forward to this signal and in front of it, and it's seeing that there's something in the way here. Now, if we do the same thing for this, you'll notice a big difference. This train is pulling all the way through and stopping right here. Okay, And this creates a big problem. Uh, now, technically, this is signaled in such a way that it would prevent any crashes, there will not be an actual crash or collision here. Um, however, there will be um, a stall. Like, it will block this entire path. Um, and this is what's really important. Because if you signal something like this, um, and you have this scenario, this is basically presenting, pre preventing any other traffic, aside from this lane right here, from proceeding forward. A train going through here, going northbound up through here, cannot proceed, because it's blocked, obviously. And then a train coming southbound, turning this way, can also not proceed because it's blocked. Whereas in this scenario, both things are possible. A train could continue upwards this way on the main line to continue wherever it needs to go. And if a train needed to turn here, coming southbound through this way, it could also continue because it stopped the train before it's even entered this cross section here. And that's what's really important. Um, now, obviously, 
if you just under signaled this, um, you would have crashes possible. So like if I got rid of that signal and a train was coming this way, it would crash because there's nothing that there's no signal here saying, you know, stop, there's something in the way. Um, so you would want to make sure to put enough signals. And if you have no idea how to signal, um, that's what I'm going to go over next. And I will kind of cover both things at once, how to prevent crashes and, and blockage like this. So just to show you, you know, in, in a live example, the difference there. Now let's go over and actually talk about how to signal and the principles I like to use to do so. Um, in its most basic form, there's two things I like to consider when placing either a rail signal or a chain signal. And again, there are exceptions to these rules. There are times when you may want to use all chain signals. So there are many times where you want to use chain signals somewhere that may not be intuitive and normal signals somewhere else um, to prevent, you know, to give priority to the lines, which is certainly a thing that that is, I would say, beyond basic. Um, so for the very basic signaling of a junction and of rails, this is I consider this basically full. I've never had an issue with this. If I actually follow this, sometimes I make a mistake and don't follow it correctly. <laughs> but if you do follow it correctly, just to do basic signaling, what I like to think of when placing signals is you place chain signals before any rail crossing. A crossing meaning, you know, where rails actually cross over through each other. Um, and then normal signals uh, before any rail merges. Okay, now let's actually go through that for real here, and it will make sense as we do it. And all these green sections are places you can place signals, uh, if, if you hadn't figured that out already. Um, I suppose I should have mentioned that, but I, it's fairly self-explanatory. I think this just indicates anywhere you can place a signal. Um, so let's start. I like to do it one line at a time. You could do it a section at a time. I find that to be a little confusing, especially if you're newer. Um, so um, I like to... I like to do it one rail at a time. So let's start with this rail here, this uh, northbound rail. So we come forward and we have our first section or, or our first, you know, instance of a, of a crossing is what this would be. This would be a crossing again, because rails are crossing. So we're going to place a chain signal. Okay. Now let's move forward. Now you'll notice this is blinking, which means it's not going to work. Um, don't panic. Don't worry. Um, it will work itself out once we actually continue signaling through move forward. We have another rail crossing. So we're going to place another chain signal. Move forward again. And this time we have a rail merge, right? It's two rails merging into one. And we now want to take normal signals. Remember, normal signals before merges. I like to put them as close as possible. You can put them really anywhere in here. It should work basically the same. Um, place one here. Okay. Now I'm going to just hop over to the closest rail next to it and just get this one. Um, this is another rail merge, right? It's basically the same merge we were doing, but just a different part of it. So place a normal signal here because we're going into a merge. Okay, now let's cover this section, this rail here. We come through and we have another crossing. So let's place a chain signal before this crossing. Come through, we have another crossing. So place another chain signal. Come through, we have another merge place a normal signal. Same thing we did. Let's just hop on over to the closest rail. We have a merge. It's the same merge, just the second rail of it. Place another normal signal. Now, you want to look and make sure every rail has signals. And things are blinking, which means something's wrong. We're missing rails on two or signals on two rail sections. This section and this section. So let's start here. We have another cross. Place a chain signal. Come through. We have another cross. It's the same cross, but it is a different rail, so we still need to signal this. Um, place another chain signal. Come through. We have a merge. Place a normal signal. And now at this point, the only thing missing is signal is this one here. And very much like this section or this section, it's a merge. So we're going to place a normal signal. And this junction is now signaled identical to this junction and will work exactly the same and will work properly. Um, now you could chain signal basically this whole thing if you wanted, like if you just chain signaled through this whole thing, um, I think it would technically still work. I'd like to do different 
the two different signals just because it keeps it straight in my head it makes it a little more make, it makes a little more sense to me if it makes more sense to you to just do chain signals that would probably still work um just don't do only normal signals otherwise you will have this issue happening and there we go um now let's move lastly over to this just run through it a little quicker this is let's say let's say this is a t-junction let's say you have a four-way junction same exact principles apply here um and again, it just takes some practice. Go through through it slow at first. Uh, let's start with this rail here, this west to east. We have cross. Um, also, if you go to place the signal close and it's and it's placing on the wrong rail, if you hit R to rotate, it will place it on the. It'll switch sides, as you can see. Um, so, just a quick note there. So before crossing chain signal come through the next section into the next rail interaction i'm going to hit r again because if we want it on this rail and there's a crossing so chain signal come through we have a merge here another one here because this is the same merge just a, a different part of the rail uh, let's do this one now crossing so chain signal another crossing chain signal Another merge, normal signal, hop up to here, another merge, a normal signal, and we could just proceed through, just do it, I like doing it again rail by rail, it makes more sense to me, so again make sure you place it on the correct side of the rail, based on if you're using right hand drive or left hand drive, we have a cross, chain signal, we have another cross, a chain signal, we have another merge, normal signal, hop over, Another part of the merge, different rail, normal signal, come over to this rail, same exact principle, chain signal, because there were cross, chain signal, and then normal signal, normal signal, and I think we're basically set, actually, <laughs> at this point. Um, you know, you can double check, just kind of run through your rails, we have this one signaled, we got this one signaled, we got this one signaled, um, and there we go. You could change these up, you know, again, if you want to just change signal the whole thing, you could probably do that. The important thing is that these inner signals are chain signals and not normal signals, otherwise you're going to have trains pull through and stop in the middle of the junction and block all of your through traffic, which is not what you want. Uh, another last thing to touch on as we close this out, make sure you space your rails in such a way where you can signal properly. Uh, if you were to place these too close together like this, or in some cases, even if you place them two spaces apart, I did these three spaces. Um, in, in, in some cases, if you place them two spaces apart, you can have issues where you don't have room for signaling. Um, usually it should work with the spacing. I do three just to be safe. But if I had placed these closer together, there were there's sections like in here and such where I wouldn't have actually been able to fit like both these signals in here and we wouldn't have been able to do it properly and that would have caused an issue so there we go that is the tutorial for your basic signaling principles i hope that makes sense uh i hope it was enough to the point for you i just wanted to cover you know at least the principles of signals the differences and how to actually do it in practice uh, if you have any questions and such uh, leave them down below if you did enjoy a like is much appreciated if you're new to the channel uh, welcome and feel free to subscribe to keep up with any new content and uh, suggestions for future tutorials or more on signaling, I'm definitely open to hearing, so please leave those below as well. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.